All right, it's been a while since I've done one of these take one kind of talking episodes, um, but a lot has been happening with Disney, Disney Plus, and the streaming space that I wanted to talk about. Um, it was announced a few months ago that Disney was going to partner with Fox and Max, HBO Max, um, from Warner Discovery to launch a new sports streaming experience and that's something that is supposed to be launched later this year and there was a lot of discussion about that why is that happening um and essentially what that bundle is going to be is combining all of the sports content from those companies um, that they offer and providing that in kind of a a uh, streaming bundle, if you will, to sports fans um, aimed at people who were were cord cutters or or never cord. So people who either have completely gotten rid of cable or have, have never had cable. Um, and so there was a lot of discussion about that. And then some of the other content that would be available because of that, um, for instance, like TNT and TBS, um, it's not going to only be the sports content available on there. It will be the other content that's regularly available on those networks as well. Um, and so jumping forward um, to now, Disney had announced that at that time, they had also announced in their earnings call that they were going to um, have ESPN the ESPN standalone app and standalone streaming experience available by 2025. Um, since then, it's also been announced that ESPN, this new ESPN service will be available, will be visible on Disney plus um, like we've talked about many, many times. And so the future could be when you log into Disney plus, there are seven tiles. There are the five tiles that we see now. If you are a Disney Plus subscriber in the United States, um, the Hulu tile has been added for people who subscribe to the Disney Plus Hulu um, bundle. And then that seventh tile, ESPN Plus, could be added as well. The biggest thing that has happened this last week, this last week it was announced um, that HBO Max was going to start being available through Disney Plus for Disney Plus subscribers um, and people who play pay for Disney Plus and also for HBO Max, which now is called Max. Um, and so essentially what that could mean in the future is when you log on, you would actually, if you subscribe to Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus, or whatever the new ESPN service is going to be when it launches in 2025, and Max, you could actually have eight different tiles on there. Um, so getting into the numbers a little bit, why is Disney wanting to do this and why are they wanting to do it now? Um, I find it interesting that they have made all of these moves as far as they're, they're partnering with different companies on sports programming to try to get more people into um, some sort of bundle package, almost like, you know, resembling what cable was and we've talked about a lot what cable was as far as being bundled and all these channels being bundled together then everybody kind of went all a la carte um, and now everyone's sort of coming back to this and we've talked a lot about why you know why is that happening why did everyone go all a carte and then everybody is returning now I think everyone's seeing the value in that bundle now um, and everybody's kind of coming back to sort of coming back to the reality of of people wanting to bundle content together. Um, and we also talked about, you know, Disney being one of the primary media companies that could do that. Now, if you look at my background, there's also Amazon Prime Video is visible there. Apple TV Plus is visible there, Netflix. These are all services that could do that as well. And Apple TV Plus does to a certain extent. You can subscribe through Apple TV and you can access um, a lot of your subscriptions through Apple TV. Prime Video does the same where you can access that. Um, but, you know, Apple T Apple and Amazon are technology companies. They're not kind of that legacy media company. So I think this is Disney's attempt to be that media company um, wanting to allow people to bundle. Um, and so inevitably, when we go back to that cable 
provider model, um, we talked a lot about, you know, I think and others think Disney wants to be um, in the competition for um, providing that service. Uh, they want to be the one stop shop where people can go and they can access through Disney Plus and they can actually access um, different apps and access different um, streaming services. Because, again, if you think about we talked about a long time ago, um, people not wanting subscribers to leave their streaming service if you are a disney plus subscriber and you wanted to watch something on hulu before those two services were available through disney plus you would have to leave disney plus app search over for hulu app and maybe in the process of searching over for hulu app maybe on your phone or on your tv netflix is the app right next to disney plus standing in your way between disney plus and hulu maybe you get you go into disney plus maybe you go into amazon prime video or apple tv plus and you get lost in those and you start watching in those and all of a sudden the walt disney company has lost your attention they've lost your hours or minutes viewed in their services um and now that's been alleviated <clears throat> a little bit oh, excuse me that hulu is available on disney plus for those people who subscribe to um the disney bundle um maybe it'll be further alleviated when uh, espn is added to it um and that i think is the first reason they are wanting to partner with hbo and warner discovery and provide max through Disney Plus. Um, so now, excuse me, you have multiple ways, and this is the first non-Disney owned streaming product that you would be able to access through Disney Plus. So they are, I think, as a legacy media company, trying to set themselves up to be a competitor for that type of customer service that Amazon Prime and Apple TV Plus um, current or Apple and Amazon currently provide customers being able to access multiple apps and multiple streaming services through one um, kind of housing streaming service. Okay, and next, if we get into the subscriber numbers a little bit, here could be a reason that uh, or a comparison Disney is wanting to partner with Max right now, and they're making the moves they've made over the last several months in street their streaming platforms and streaming entertainment. Um, Disney right now, if you combine, if you consider Disney, Hulu, and ESPN Plus together, they have 228.6 million subscribers. Netflix is by far the leading subscriber um, pro or subscriber um, number now with 269.6 million. So that 228.6 million um, for Disney services breaks down as 153.6 for Disney Plus, 50.2 million for Hulu, and 24.8 million for ESPN Plus. Now, if you look at Max, and this is a, a number with a pretty big asterisk beside it because it includes their linear television viewers and everything, but they're reporting, or it was reported, they have 99.6 million subscribers. Now, again, that includes um, beyond just the Max streaming provider um and obviously there would be some overlap with people who subscribe to either disney plus hulu espn plus all three of those and people who also subscribe to max um, but when you put those together you do get a little bit closer to being able to um compete with netflix the the, the largest um streaming provider and you get really really close and and, and probably surpass Amazon and Amazon Prime Video because Amazon doesn't really you know all the numbers for Amazon Prime Video that are always reported are they they're really reported or people are really reporting the membership in Amazon Prime so it's really really difficult to get um, a, a feel of how many people are actually viewing and watching on Amazon Prime um, but a couple things that are really, really interesting is uh, another thing is March 2024, when Nielsen put out their report in March 2024 of the, the, the number of or the percentage of viewers watching different types of programming, streaming was the largest 
type of entertainment being watched at 38.5%. That was followed by 22.5% of people watching broadcast. Um, I'm sorry, 28.3% watching cable, then 22.5% watching broadcast and 10.7 other. If we go into the streaming information, then net, uh, YouTube is 9.7% of that. So when people are watching streaming, 9.7% of the time they're watching YouTube. If you don't look at YouTube because, and you look at these uh, streaming services, First up is Netflix at 8.1%. Then you have Hulu at 3%. Amazon Prime Video at 2.8%. Disney Plus at 1.7%. You jump down to Max at 1.3%. So if this is another attempt to have um, more of that market share and people to um, spend more time on your platform. So by Disney partnering with Max to provide Max on Disney Plus um, or provide the access to Disney Plus, then they are able to hopefully keep people more engaged with that Disney Plus streaming platform and the streaming um, atmosphere that they're trying to create. Another really, really interesting thing to me is that in um, earlier in the year, February 2024, um, Forbes had reported the they asked people the services that they would cancel if a price increase. Disney Plus was at the highest, was at the top of that list. 44% um, of respondents said they would cancel Disney Plus if a price increase were implemented. Um, next was Hulu at 40%, then ESPN Plus at 35%. Netflix stood at 33%, Amazon Prime Video at 32%. Again, um, people probably don't really realize a price increase for Amazon Prime Video because it's included in their Amazon Prime membership. Um, but down, if you look at HBO Max, this is when it was HBO Max and now it's just Max, that was 21%. So this is a, a move also that Disney is trying to keep people in their service and trying to decrease churn rate churn rate being the people who sign up and then um, cancel a subscription once a show is over that they like, or uh, maybe they, they know something's coming out in a few months that they want to watch. They don't want to watch something that right now, so they'll cancel and they'll re-up, they'll resubscribe in another few months. And so this is something that, you know, really, really interesting for Disney to try and get people to spend more time on the platform also possibly make them less likely to cancel the Disney Plus subscription if there are other general entertainment on their platform or people can access other general entertainment on their platform. Now, this move does not come without criticism. Um, and we'll go back a few months when uh, ESPN Bet was launched. And we talked a lot about in class and in writing and, and even on here, we talked a lot about how ESPN bet um, or, or how the Walt Disney Company would have to be very, very careful the way that they communicated ESPN bet to um, subscribers of their streaming services, to fans of the company, to consumers of the company, because for a long, long time, over a century now, the Walt Disney Company has been seen as a family friendly company. And so including something or launching their own sports gambling betting house, ESPN Bet, could be seen as um, something that, that goes against the family-friendly notion or that Walt Disney and the Walt Disney Company has tried to um, kind of tell that story for the last 100 years and, and people have that sentiment of theirs. On the announcement of max being included on disney plus for people who subscribe to max um they're also the parents television and media council the ptc put out a strong letter in opposition of it um that disney partnering with max and the type of programming that they have on max the type of um less family friendly content that is available on max um and and so there definitely is some opposition to this um so what is next? 
we've talked a lot about when people kind of come back to this bundling idea. Disney, I think, wants to be in a position where they are one of the legacy media companies that can provide that access. Right now, Apple and Amazon provide that access. And Xfinity, to, to a certain extent, they can provide that access as well to people because you can subscribe and access um, different streaming services through there. I think Disney wants to be a competitor in that space where they can be the one-stop shop. You could open up the Disney Plus app and you could access, obviously, Disney Plus. You could access Hulu. You could access ESPN Plus or whatever the new ESPN service is going to be by 2025. You once in midsummer, you would be able to access Max if you subscribe to Max. Um, with whatever's going on with Paramount right now, um, and their situation in the future, would you be able to access Paramount Plus through Disney Plus, or would some of these services even be just kind of lumped in with the it, with the Disney Plus content, and being that one stop shop for people and their streaming entertainment choices? Because one really really important thing that has come out is consistently when asked, people have. Uh, reported that they want to pay for two or three streaming services. They really don't want to pay for more than three streaming services um, for their general entertainment or for their entertainment options in the streaming their, the streaming um, atmosphere. So I think Disney Plus is, or Disney is trying to put themselves in a position where they can offer that service to people. Yes, there will be different subscriptions. In the future, though, I think you will also see more bundling in the subscription um, prices where if you are a fan of Disney Plus or you are a fan of Max or Paramount Plus or all of these different streaming services, I think you might in the near future find yourself paying a, a price a little bit more than you do now, but you have access to many, many different services all in one place you're able to just pay for that service one time. You have access to all of that. That's what's going on with the Disney bundle right now. When you look at Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, that is what's going to happen midsummer when Max is included with Disney or you can access through Disney. That bundle is going to come out. I think we're going to get back to where we have that bundling model People are just simply accessing all of this information now through streaming services through over the internet um, than they are through the cable providers as we used to have. Um, and one more thing, don't forget that Disney has also announced of having um, channels on Disney Plus in the near future, or, or that's something that they are looking into. So um, one thing we've talked about we and we said we're going to come back to this bundle process at one point there was the cable model everybody then went a la carte and i think everybody's kind of coming back to that cable model now so it's really really interesting to to keep track of and to see where we're going to go from here so thanks a lot for listening